Hello. Um, so this will be the very last uh, video I make for awards and stuff uh, this year. Uh, the Oscars have finished, and um, Best Picture went to The Shape of Water as well as Director. And if you all have been watching me for a while, you know I would have done Kirk and Christopher Nolan to have won. But it didn't, and I didn't think uh, it was he was going to win, unfortunately. Not that I gave up hope, but, you know, I mean, the Oscars can be unpredictable. And they certainly were for Best Picture, because everything was aiming towards three billboards outside of him in Missouri to win Best Picture. Um, won everything else, but it didn't win, you know, the Oscar at all for that category. It won for Best Supporting Actor and Actress. Two awards I believed it was going to win all along, and it did. Um, now, I have not seen The Shape of Water, um, but I have heard a good amount about it that uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to buy it on Blu-ray at all, um, but if it's on Netflix or something, maybe I'll watch it, but I don't know. Just the print, I mean, it sounds like a cr sort of like the Creature from the Black Lagoon, and um, it sounds like Beauty and the Beast in a way. Like some sort of fairy tale set in the Cold War, found this creature, and it, just holding it. Uh, it doesn't sound like they are doing any experiments or anything on this thing. That looks enough from what I've heard. Perhaps they are. You know, Michael Shannon, yeah, he's being a jerk uh, to the thing, to the creature. Though, uh, he seems to play a jerk quite a, a lot. You know, an ass, essentially, uh, for lack of a better word. Um, and, you know, and apparently, I, the woman who is mute, played by Sally Hawkins in The Shape of Water, she and the creature uh, seemed to have, apparently had sex. And I heard that, and I'm like, uh, um, sounds uh, like bestiality to me. Uh, doesn't sound like my cup of tea. Uh, though, again, it could be better than what I've heard. You know, again, haven't seen it. Never got a chance to even watch it, honestly. But, uh, I don't know, I just was, then again with the premise, it just sounded a little odd and weird to me. But, uh, uh, Guillermo del Toro makes some weird movies. Pan's Labyrinth, I've seen. I enjoyed that, I thought that was a decent film. But, I don't know, from what I've heard of uh, Shape of Water, I still maintain I would have liked to have seen... Nolan take home best director and picture. And again, as you know, I also like the work of Christopher Nolan. Uh, he is, my I'd say, he's my favorite director, uh, and particularly of this century, as so far. Um, he's amazing. He's made some of the best films, uh, the 2000s and 2010s. At least that's of my opinion. Maybe you think otherwise. Uh, Gary Oldman, though, won Best Actor. I was happy, and I expected him to do so. And uh, <laughs> he, 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 was, he was really good. Uh, and Darkest Hour, phenomenal performance. I enjoyed that film a lot. Um, Allison Janney won Supporting Actress for I, Tanya. Shape of Water, one music. Uh, I didn't. I I mean I listened to. I was going to say uh, again I didn't see Shape of Water, but I listened to the s soundtrack for Shape of Water, and it's a pretty good soundtrack. Uh, though I thought Dunkirk, was, the, the music was just. I don't know. I kind of want to say I, it fits with the film. It fits with Dunkirk. But then again, I'm sure Shape of Water music, shape, uh, 
it fits with that film as well, um, or its own film. But I enjoyed the music for that. Uh, I myself, um, yeah. Also, John Williams was nominated for Star Wars. Seems to always be nominated, uh, and rightfully so. John Williams does such amazing work. He deserves a, a lot more Oscars than he has. He has five. And uh, mm. sorry for the sound of my computer being warm. Apparently, uh, sorry for that too. But I uh, made sure it was very cool. But for some reason, I guess every time I turn this on, it warms up. I have no way of stopping it. Otherwise, you'd be hearing the loud noise of my fan, which, you know, uh, isn't even a guarantee the computer would quit making this noise. Uh, hence, I've been talking loudly. Um, that all aside, um... I wanted to say something about Dunkirk that I've heard somebody complain about. Like, they didn't really tell me anything about Dunkirk. They didn't tell me why it is. I didn't learn anything from Dunkirk. Essentially what they're saying. Uh, from what I can heard from no one in interviews, he wasn't trying to teach anybody about the evacuation of Dunkirk. He was trying to like bring light to the story and places every single person who watches the film in the shoes of those in that situation. You are in, uh, on the land with the soldiers, uh, trying to get off the beach. You are on the boat, uh, going across the channel to uh, help get those soldiers off the beach. You are in the air with the uh, Spitfire pilots, doing what you can to doing what they can to protect their fellow countrymen and allies with the you know, French and others, uh, Indians and Canadians uh, were also there. Um, I know some people complained again about, like, oh, Indians weren't represented and these people weren't represented. But it's a $500 million budget film. So much of the budget went into the practical effects, went into recreation of the costumes and this and that, as well as actors and paying for a lot of extras. I understand some disappointment in that of we're not representing that those people or those people who are involved. And I don't believe no one was saying none of those people were involved. It's just you know, with so many extras. It's like I don't know. It doesn't seem possible. For 400,000 people, including the main actors, to be on Dunkirk Beach. Because then you'd have to have such a huge amount of budget of, of a movie that it's like it could go such so over budget, trying to pay extras, having them be in, spend money on all the clothes and this and that and... It's just, you know, it's just huge, it would be so huge, and, you know, it, it would be, it, it could possibly, you know, uh, um, just, I don't know, I, I don't really know what it's, I want to say exactly, except I guess, not blow people's minds, it would just be so huge that people would be like, wow, you yeah. have, that many people on your film? Wow, that's a lot. People could possibly then quit looking at the thinking or watching the movie and the plot and think, oh, how much money they spent on this? Because that's what some people do for films I've seen for people. Instead of the plot or anything, they then focus on the money they spent into it. And sometimes they think if it's a bad movie or they didn't like it, they say, oh, the money was wasted here. And it's like, well... I guess you didn't pay attention to plot. And, um, again, with Dunkirk, uh, had no one explained about the film, like, what Dunkirk happened, what the exactly happened before the Dunkirk evacuation. It'd probably be like two and a half hours to explain all, to explain all of that, as well as encompass what the film already has. That way, everybody 
is up to speed on everything that's going on. It'd probably be like two and a half hours, and I'm sure people would complain about that thing, like, oh, it's too long, or, ah, oh, it's too slow here and there, or it gets slow, or this or that, and it's like, you have people who just would complain. I mean, people do complain now, and I'm saying some of the complaints aren't legitimate in the eyes of viewers of the film. I mean, I myself loved it, obviously, I don't really have anything much to complain myself. There are those who just don't aren't fond of Dunkirk like some are, um, but I think Nolan's idea was to just shed light on the, uh, the story in general and try to tell the story in such a way that's unique and interesting and keeps a, hopefully keeps you coming back to the film and rewatching it. Um, I believe. Uh, <clears throat> It's a great film. Would have loved to have seen the Dunkirk win Best Picture and Director. Shape of Water won. And, uh, I watched the Oscars only through a live stream of people who are watching it, but commenting over it, as well as kind of like poking fun and such at the film. Or, not the films, but, you know, at how political it is anymore, because it is very political. That's why I don't really watch the Oscars anymore. Actually, I really never watched the Oscars, but you know, I, I would have been tempted sometimes. But you know, I, but as years have gone on, it's gotten really political, and I don't care about the politics of filmmakers and actors. Honestly, I, that's just me. Uh, maybe some enjoy that stuff. I don't. Uh, get up on stage, thank the people who you worked with on the film, thank your friends, family, you know, you know those kind of people, and just get off stage. Say thanks, and there you go. You don't really need a, a long uh, spiel of about this issue or that issue. Nobody's here to hear you talk politics or anything. Um, though it is your First Amendment right, and, and again, I don't want to censor anybody, obviously, but you know, I believe in that. I believe in freedom of speech, but still, I'm here. If I'm going to watch the Oscars. I'm here to watch hopefully my favorite films of the year that I'm honored. Hopefully honored. Or at least my picks that I would like to see win since my favorites didn't maybe get nominated. Well, I want to hopefully see them win, and if my preferred choice to win such of an award doesn't win, that's a bummer, but hey, hopefully the person who wins has a good speech. You know, thinks the people involved in the movie, thinks their wife, their husband, kids, whoever. Uh, people have vote along those lines. Uh, but it's gotten to the point where it's so political that I essentially just am tuning out anymore. I don't really care unless there's some reason for me to watch said award show. Like, for instance, that. <laughs> the live stream of people just kind of poking fun at the situation overall. And, well, they were happy when Gary Oldman won the Oscar. And they liked his speech. But overall, they were kind of like, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, get on with it. And also, they were like complaining about how it goes on forever. And that's another thing for me. Like, it goes on way longer than they say it's supposed to. And they, it's just, it's so, I don't know. It's like, all right, get to the point, get to the awards, see the nominees, and see who won. That's just do that. It used to be fairly simple. But now it isn't anymore, it seems like. And, um, yeah. Dunkirk did win Best Sound Editing, Sound Mixing, and Editing, so Dunkirk did not go home empty handed, at least. Um, won three of its eight nominations. You know, wished it won more, but. 
It happens. Preferred picks don't always win, or at least not as much as you had hoped. But I have to say, at least Gary Oldman has an Academy Award. Well, this should be like his fifth uh, Oscar by now, I believe. Um, and yeah, that's uh, really all I have to say. Otherwise, I'll just be rambling now. Um, and uh, that's it. I'll talk to you all of next time about something else. So until next time, I'll see you all later.